You may first be wondering why I am standing here in this ridiculous outfit. Well, that's because Cycling Tips' is US headquarters is here in Boulder, Colorado, and we are now experiencing our fourth winter of the season, I think. Anyway, I am here to talk to you about SRAM's new rival Axis Group, which is just being launched today. If you remember, if you're a regular reader of Cycling Tips, you may remember that back in February, I wrote a speculative article on what rival Axis might look like and as it turns out, I was pretty much dead on. So I did confirm with SRAM that all of the electronic components on Rival Axis are completely shared between Force and Red. Uh, in other words, uh, the, the button actuators and the motors and the batteries and the electronic brain, all that stuff is exactly the same from group set to group set. As a result, in terms of the core functionality, basically what you have here on Rival Axis is really the same as you get in Force and Red. Going along with all that Axis features is the same smartphone app that you have with other SRAM Axis group sets. And that gives you access to, no pun intended, gives you access to the same range of analytics and customization. So you can connect everything wirelessly to the components. You can control what each button does. You can, you can find out how much time you're spending in each gear, for example. It's plenty of information that's there if you want it, but you don't have to use it either. Um, as far as out back, uh, another thing that, that I talked about in that article in February, it, this is not really that much of a stretch. Uh, Rival Access has, of course, gone with the 12-speed format that was already introduced on Force and Red. Uh, it uses the same proprietary chain roller diameter. It's the same pitch as it was before, but still other chains won't work on this setup. Uh, and so you have 12 sprockets out back, your choice of two or one chain ring up front. You are a little bit more limited in terms of gearing options on Rival Access relative to Force and Red, not too much though, it's not that bad. Uh, so for double chain rings up front, you are limited to either 4835, 4633, or uh, 4330. And then out back, you only have two cassettes to choose from, uh, a 1030 and a 1036. Uh, for one by direct mount chain rings, you can go with a 38, a 40, or a 42. Since all of SRAM's 12 speed road stuff is compatible, however, even if you don't have a gearing option within the rival axis family that is completely to your liking, there is quite a bit of mixing and matching that is possible. Say for example, you prefer the 1033 cassette from Force or Red, you can just pop that right on here and everything indexes perfectly. It goes on the same XDR free hub body, all good to go. What's also pretty cool is uh, we're seeing certainly a rise in popularity of you know, the so-called mullet drivetrans where you pair a one by front chain ring with road levers and a mountain bike cassette and rear derailleur. And that is certainly an option here because again, all of the access stuff talks to each other. You can kind of customize it however you want. So if you want to run rival access levers and a rival crank set one by uh, with a SRAM 1052 cassette and the new GX Eagle access wireless rear derailleur, you can do that. Uh, it all works together. You can even program the buttons if you wanted to to work with the uh, RockShox Reverb Access dropper seat post. So all that stuff is cross compatible in that same Axis family. So it's all pretty nicely compatible. But as I mentioned initially, SRAM has carried over all of the electronic Axis components from Force and Red onto Rival Axis. So again, the core functionality is unchanged. However, to hit that price point that they wanted to hit on this thing, SRAM did have to omit a handful of features from Rival that you can find in Force and Red. One of the biggest differences is that these levers no longer have the expansion ports that you have in Force and Red to plug in things like remote shifters. Uh, in the Force levers, you have one per lever and, and Red, you have two. Uh, in Rival, you don't have any. So if you are really big on the remote shifters, you'll have to upgrade to the Force levers up front. Uh, however, if you've never used them and you don't think you ever will, or you just don't really care, not a big deal. Uh, the other thing that is missing from the levers, uh, you still have adjustable lever position, so you, so you can easily accommodate different hand sizes. However, what's missing now is on force and red, you have adjustable lever bite point up top here, which can be used to adjust how far the levers move before the brake pads actually start to touch the rotor. There is an upside to the fact that SRAM omitted those features from the rival axis levers, however. Looking at this, you may have noticed that it looks a little smaller than what you have with Red or Force, and that's because it is. It's actually not all that far off from what you have with a Shimano Di2 hydraulic lever, in fact. The lever body girth and overall diameter is quite a bit smaller, and this peak up front is quite a bit smaller as well. So if you've had issues with the Force or Red levers in the past, just, you know, you didn't like how big they looked or you didn't like how big they felt in your hands, because all the Axis road stuff is cross-compatible, it might be worth considering 
pairing these rival levers with the rest of the stuff instead of the force and red ones. Again, you do lose that expansion port capability, but if you didn't really need it before in the past, you're probably not gonna miss it anyway. I also mentioned just a minute ago that there is a power meter option included with rival axis, and it does cost very little comparatively speaking at about $250 US for the upgrade. There are some differences in the power meter itself, however, compared to what you had have before with other Axis Road group sets, whereas those are uh, chain ring spider based, so you have dual sided capability. This one is built into the spindle, so you really only are measuring the left side and then doubling that figure for, the total, uh, for your total estimated power output. Is it as accurate as what you get with a proper dual sided setup? Well, no, but again, it is quite inexpensive you do have the upside that this power meter is not built into the chain ring. So when you do wear out a chain ring, you can just replace the chain ring and not replace the whole power meter that's built into the whole thing. Um, I do like that it uses uh, relatively standard AAA sized lithium batteries instead of a proprietary rechargeable setup. Uh, rechargeable batteries do have a limited life cycle. And so over time they do lose a little bit of their runtime. With this one, you do have batteries that you do have to replace every now and then. I mean, SRAM says that they'll run for, on average, about a year for the average user. But the fact that they're not a built-in rechargeable setup shouldn't really be a big deal. And truth be told, if you did want to go out and find a AAA rechargeable lithium setup, you could probably do that if you wanted to. The one thing to note is that SRAM does not recommend using AAA alkaline batteries that you'd find in a, you know, a gas station or a grocery store or whatever. Uh, those apparently won't provide enough juice and it might work, um, but you'll also get a, a low battery warning. So that's apparently not advised. So keep that in mind as well. As far as the brakes go, the hydraulic ratio is like in the levers and the brake caliper, that is completely unchanged. So the, the power and the modulation lever feel, again, that's all shared between rival axis and now uh, force and red. So as far as the performance goes, that's really not, not changed at all. You do have uh, the, the less expensive pace line rotors, uh, which are heavier than what you have in the upper end stuff. But again, because it's all mix and match, you can kind of run with whatever you want. Uh, there is a little bit of a convenience factor that, that's worth noting. Whereas on SRAM's nicer stuff, you do have what they call the bleeding edge bleed port. It's basically a, a quick release fitting for the, for, the, uh, for the bleed syringe. With the rival access setup, it's more of a traditional bleed plug where you have to unscrew the thing and then screw in the, the the syringe tip and kind of go about your business that way so it's not quite as convenient to do but again it is a fair bit cheaper you don't really have to bleed brakes that often anyway it's not really that big of a deal last thing that might be worth mentioning the stuff does look really good especially given the fact that it is you know supposedly sram's entry level into the road access wireless electronic family I mean, the, the polished and black anodized finish is really nice. It looks quite premium. I would say, honestly, in a lot of ways, it actually looks better than Force. Um, I personally like how the spider is integrated into the crank arm on the two by uh, crank sets. And overall, I think SRAM did a really good job of just making it look expensive. It doesn't look like a cheap setup. So kudos to SRAM there. And certainly as compared to first generation Force Axis, this stuff looks great. At this point, what you're really wondering about, however, is how well this stuff actually works. As I mentioned earlier, all the electronic components are completely shared between the three road access group sets. So it really shouldn't come as any surprise that when you're riding this stuff, there really is no difference. I mean, when I say that it feels exactly the same, if you were to close your eyes when you were riding your bike, which I don't really recommend, your fingers would have absolutely no way to tell the difference between the rival axis stuff versus force or red. The shift performance is exactly the same. Uh, in some ways, actually, I would almost argue that it's better. Uh, SRAM didn't really have an explanation for this when, when I asked him about it, but uh, I noticed this, and actually Matt Phillips at Bicycle Magazine, he independently noticed this as well, but we both felt that the rear shifts on rival axis are actually faster by just a tiny little bit than force, and certainly faster than, than red with that machined cassette. I mean, some of that difference might be due to the fact that you have you know, stamped steel sprockets out back instead of the machine setup, you know, those cassettes historically have generally run a little bit quieter as well, and that's the case here. Um, but it does seem to shift a little bit faster, which I would have thought indicated something different in the motor, but supposedly that's not the case. Either way, the shifts are really fast, they're really precise. SRAM, I think, still has a leg up on Shimano in terms of shift logic as far as how the levers operate. It's super intuitive to use. In stock format, you tap that button to go to a harder gear, tap that one to go to an easier gear out back, push both the buttons at the same time to shift up front, push both buttons again to shift up front in the other direction. It's really, really intuitive. 
if you've never used an electronic setup before, there's almost no learning curve. And yes, as I mentioned before, rival access on the scale is heavier by a fair bit than force or red. But most of the bigger chunks of weight are down low, you know, kind of down at the crank set and the cassette, the rear derailleur, that sort of thing. So you don't really notice it as much as if you had the weight up front, like kind of what I call the swing weight. I mean, the, the weight in the levers, that increase is pretty marginal. So there's not really any noticeable weight up front here. Um, so it, it doesn't really feel like you're hauling up a whole bunch of weight with you. In SRAM's defense, I mean, they pretty wisely did bolt all this stuff on in this test bike with uh, onto the specialized Athos Expert frame set, which yes, it's the second tier Athos, whatever, but it's still wicked light. I think it's something like 700 grams or so. And this whole bike, as you see it here, with pretty, you know, relatively low end DT Swiss aluminum clinchers, uh, is about 17.2 pounds. I think it's just over eight kilos or so. And the retail price on this particular bike is somewhere around, I think 4,800 or so. Not terribly inexpensive, but overall, considering that the group set is, again, kind of heavy, that total weight is very impressive. And it does go to show that you can build up a pretty decently light bike with this stuff. And more importantly, that weight is not terribly noticeable. So big plus there, especially given the price point. So when all is said and done, where does this leave us? Shimano at this point still does not have a 105 DI2 group set. Price wise, uh, this rival access stuff is going to undercut every other electronic uh, road group set that's out on the market right now. And yes, it is heavy, but SRAM is clearly making the bet that more people are going to be attracted to the convenience and the performance of an electronic group set instead of the added weight that you get with kind of the lower price point. Overall, I would have to say that aside from the weight weenie crowd, I think SRAM is probably making a safe bet there. And judging from what I can tell so far with OEM partners, you are definitely going to start seeing this stuff pretty much everywhere and in pretty sizable quantities. I mean, again, it is designed to go not quite exactly head to head with Shimano Mechanical, but even as good as Shimano Mechanical is, it is hard to compete with the overall shift performance of an electronic group set. And th this stuff is going to be all over the place. And for good reason. It's really good. Well, those are my thoughts on SRAM's new Rival Access group set. For the full report, including all the details on the weight breakdown and the pricing and some more details on the performance, make sure you check out the written article on cyclingtips.com and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here so you never miss another video from Cycling Tips. Thanks for watching. Seriously? Oh, now they're running the wood chipper. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>